Welcome to The Gal Code, our place where we come together and discuss hot topics, our weekly shenanigans, and The Gal Code, our rules to live by. Hosted by me, Rob Gartland. And me, Bibi Bagnall. We're here to bring you endless laughter, life lessons, and a good old gossip that only the best of gals could have. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, honey. Hello, how are you? Fun. What I'm a not week. fantastic. Gosh. Oh, I'm just not okay. Oh, it's been quite the week for you, I feel. It's just not, it's, it's been a journey. This week has been a journey. A full roller coaster ride. Yeah. Um, apart from all of those shenanigans that we're going to get into within today's topic. Yeah. How's everything else? How are you doing today? You've got through the week. How do you feel? I've really caught mm. up on my sleep. I feel fantastic. Oh, she's alive and kicking, ready for another working week. Oh, yeah. Oh. My two hot water bottles in tow. Love that. Love that. <laughs> love uh, that for you. That's what you wanted to say, I wasn't love, it? Yeah, I really was. Love that for so you. So, BB started basically... I know, Meg. BB. Meg is like our honorary third podcast member. And she introduced the saying, love that for you. Love that for you. And then it's kind of jumped from you to now me to now everyone I know. I just love it. Alex says it. Like, we all were like, do you know what me and Alex actually said it at the same time the other day? And the person we were with was like, wow, you really spend a lot of time together. Love that like, Love that for us. <laughs> <laughs> love that. And I say it in such a sarcastic, passive-aggressive way. I'm just like, oh. Love that for you. See, I say mine sarcastic, but then sometimes not sarcastic. Mm, I, I'm strictly sarcasm, slightly judgmental is the way I say it. Ooh, Ooh, you're Ooh he's a little bit cheeky. Never. A little cheeky. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I've got my personality back. We're thriving today. Well, it's, are we? We're always thriving. I, I've really not been thriving. I, how I'd say is I'm surviving, but I'm not thriving. I'm thriving. I'm living. Love that for Love that you. for me. <laughs> Shall we jump into our Pit and Beaks of the Week? Let's go for it, Han. Okay, so can I go first to mine? Yeah, please. So my peak of the week is just something that I'm so happy about. So it's officially October, <gasps> which means... Hang on. I need to find this out. One second. I'm going to ask Siri. Hi, Siri. How many days till Christmas? It's 82. it's 82 days until Christmas. Wow. Which means all of the supermarkets are stocked with all of the Christmas goodies. <gasps> and Lewis has launched their Christmas oh, collection. And I'd like to just put the game changer of my peak of the week was the ch- white chocolate orange what, ball. Well, chocolate orange, but, but white, white chocolate. chocolate that came out. What a little game what, changer that, that was. Yeah. Where can I get it? Every supermarket. One pound. No way. One pound. <gasps> and it was a game changer. Because I do think Christmas is top tier snack level. Absolutely. You've got Christmas in the top tier. I think... No, mid- but it's, it's, it's snacks all around. You've got mm. the chocolate. You've got the savoury. You've got yeah. the actual food. It's just where everything thrives. Yeah. And then I think mid top is summer. I quite like the picnic items that come out. Oh, M&S wait, your little tinny. selection. Thank you so much. What they call it, scrumptious summer. Mm, I love that for Mid tier, I'd say Easter. Never that overwhelmed, but if Galaxy want to release another enchanted egg next year, happy for it. Yeah, you know, I'm here for like the mini eggs, etc, yeah. etc. And then you've got Halloween in the lower bit. Nothing lower really mid. happens. Nah. So like they just make a mini roll, green or something. Yeah, and then you've got Valentine's Day at the bottom. Well, that's just sickening. Yeah, that's just, yeah. I Ugh, mean, what? not... <laughs> <laughs> but my pit of the week's a bit awkward. Okay. So is it more awkward than mine, Chugs? <laughs> no, no, it's not. But I am. Um, sometimes I'm a bit of a moody Margaret. I would never, I, you'd never guess, but I can be a little bit moody. And it was a Saturday night, and I live in the middle of of London, so I live in Covent Garden. Have you ever mentioned that before? I don't think you've mentioned. That I'm only. Covent Garden. I'm saying it for context. <laughs> so it's quite a no- You'd expect it to be quite a noisy yeah. area, and. Over Corona, I got used to being quite quiet. And obviously the theatres are closed. And where my window looks down is between two theatres. So normally I'd get the 10pm rush at the stage doors of everyone going, yeah, that doesn't happen at the moment. So the restaurant out of my window and like across the the way has started having like live music on a Saturday. Love that for you. (laughs) Until... (laughs) 
maybe like 10.30, 11. Is it 11? good live music no, or is it like No, it's not. Awkward I listened band? to the... I listened to the soundtrack to the parent trap get murdered. There <laughs> she goes. Oh, I was like, oh no. The parent no. trap is like one of my favourite films. With the ultimate soundtrack. Yeah. And I, I honestly have never wanted. I just was staring out my window at them like, are you, are you fucking kidding? I might are watch you? the parent trap tonight. Oh, do actually. it. Classic. Yeah. So, oh, I'm so sorry you had to do that. So, that, is, that is so bad. So I um, got on the internet <laughs> and wrote an email to the local council. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> No. <laughs> Saying, this is just a really irritating. It's so annoying. Like, they're blasting music all hours. It's like 11 p.m. I want to go to sleep. Anyway, the next... How is it 11 p.m.? We've got 10 p.m. curfew, hon. Yes. Oh, no, this is before that. Oh, okay. So this was a few weeks oh, ago. But the reason this has come up as the pit of the week is uh-huh. my flatmate came in the other day and she goes, do you know what? I can't believe. I was like, what? She went, because she goes to this place every single day. She loves mm. it. Someone complained to the government and they stopped them being able to play music. Stop so it. So now oh they co- they're trying to save their business and some rude person has halted them trying to make money with some live music. You know, they're just trying to have fun for everyone. And I stood in front of her and went, oh my God, I can't believe someone would do that. <laughs> I can't believe someone has done that. How, that is so terrible. And now I'm so worried that me, as a whistleblower, trying to get a good night's sleep early and watch Sex and the City without distractions of bad music, is going to come back to haunt me. So, oh I'm, so I'm a bit on the secret God. slide because if the name comes out, it's me. Right, the thing is... Okay, she, I do understand they were trying to maybe save the business, but do you think that music would have saved the business? No. Like, would you have gone and sat down in that People restaurant? People were walk, walking past laughing. No, because they're not playing it in the restaurant. They're on the, alco- the alcove of the outside. The restaurant, the band is on the street. What? Yeah. Oh, it's like yeah. glorified busking. Yeah, literally, but not good. Oh. So I think I had every right to, you know, be my moody Margaret self and make a complaint. But now I'm in this predicament where at any moment... It could be game over for Rob. Karma's going to come back around. Because, yeah, well, not Karma, yeah. Maybe. So it's all just a bit of a disaster. Oh, no. So we'll see what well, happens. You know what, right? It's not your fault that the council acted in that way because they could have just said, can you reduce the music, the hours of the music to like 2 p.m. Mm, till 6 p.m.? I'd rather they just got rid of it and all, to be honest. <laughs> it's really annoying. <laughs> like, imagine trying to have like a nice early night or watch a, a cute little movie and all you can hear is. Classic songs being murdered. L is for the way you... I'm like, oh, come on. And then people are joining in. Oh, it, uh, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I love that song. I would have that song at my wedding. Mm, I'd have any song from this, the parent trap at my wedding. Oh, great soundtrack, honestly. But yeah, my pit of the week is I'm in a bit of a predicament. Okay, so Posy Vibes, what's your peak? I did it, the Christmas food. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> Basically, when I'm eating my Terry's chocolate white orange, I want silence outside. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, that's my highlights of this week. It's been quite something overall. Love that for Thank you. Thank you. What about you, my love? Okay, so obviously I'm going to start with peak first. Yeah. So my peak, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it was quite hard to actually find one because this week has just been a write-off. Mm. But I started this new Netflix situation on Friday called Emily in Paris. Okay. Oh my god, I just absolutely loved it. Like I watched I could have watched the whole thing on Friday night, but I was like, I want to save some for Saturday. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad I did. It was so fantastic. But basically it's not total Sex in the City vibes, but it's kind of like Sex in the City-ish for the new gen. And oh my goodness, I just fell in love with it. Obviously it's all in Paris. I love Paris. It made me want to been? You've never been to Paris? No. Oh. Isn't that bad? I, just, I mean, it made me want to book a trip. Obviously, you can't because Rona. Um, oh, yeah, it's bad over there. But it's got Lily Collins in, and I, I loved her and Love Rosie. And mm. I don't know, it just made me feel so fantastic. Love that. F- I'm not going to say that saying again. Love that. That's so good. Love that for <laughs> Love you. Love that. I do need to jump on it. I've been really behind on Netflix recently. Same. Really, really behind. Do you know what I want to watch? The Crown. Have you ever watched I've it? I've never seen The Crown. I've never seen it. But then Julian Anderson, who was in The Fall, she is now coming to the new series of The Crown as Margaret Thatcher. And I saw the photos and she, they, they just looked fantastic. Identical. I saw that. Yeah. So then I was like, do you know what? I actually might get into that then. I was always meaning to watch it, but I just never jumped on. Sometimes shows get so far ahead that I struggle to then catch up. I feel a bit overwhelmed. Yeah. And then you click and you're like, oh, six seasons. Like, How many oh. series of The Crown is there? Do you know? I think this is number four, five. Oh, God, there's a Isn't, lot of them. Olivia Coleman's in it, right? Yeah. So, pit of the week. Oh, my goodness. I just, I actually... 
Well, obviously, now it has shaped this podcast episode. Yeah, completely. We've kind of shaped it around it because it's a long story to tell as a pit of the week, honestly. It's just a bit wild. So, shall we go into podcast episode? Let's just jump straight into the episode and then we can dive straight into the topic today, which is sexual health. Contraception. And everything in between. Woohoo. That's a good name, actually. I like that. I think we've just... (laughs) We're so professional. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Our bits and pieces. Head across to Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, or even just shout at Alexa, and she will play our podcast for you every Wednesday. Click subscribe and leave a review. YouTube. Oh, yeah. And we're on YouTube now. (laughs) So, we are back with this week's podcast, and this whole experience this week has framed this week's pod. It has indeed. It's been quite traumatising for you. It has. Uh, So, if you follow BB on the ground, you'll have seen bits of what's happened. Yeah, a little snippet. But I think we should just let you divulge into what has been a contraception situation. If I put this on Instagram story, you'd be like, tap, 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 tap. So, I made the decision to get the copper coil contraception Mm -hmm. because it's not hormonal Mm -hmm. and it lasts for a minimum of five years. So, what were your original options and have you tried any of them before? Okay, so the first one I did when I was 16 or 17 was I went on the pill mm-hmm. and it was the one called microgoinin. Basically, there's loads and loads of different types of pills. Yeah. And it gave me spots, which was lovely. So then I changed and went on another pill called Yasmin, which made me depressed. It was frightening mm. how that changed my mood. I've never experienced anything oh, like really? it. Oh, really? Yeah, it was insane. Like, I would have dreams at night that I was drowning in the water. And then I'd Google <laughs> it and it would be like, but it feels like you're in a situation you can't get out of, you're trapped. So I came off the pill and then I was like, wow, I feel like myself again. Oh, um, that's, yeah, that's crazy that that made such a difference. Yeah. So then I got, when I was 18... Yeah, just before I was 18, I got the implant, which is when they put a little thing in your arm, mm-hmm. and that lasts for three years. Which is so creepy to feel, by the way. The amount of people oh. I know have had, like, feel my implant, and I'm like... <laughs> I remember like, I'd accidentally nope. like, touch it in the shower, and I'd be like, ew. Oof, cringy. And then that was fantastic for the first year, so I didn't have any periods. I was like, ooh, loving life and saving so much money, not buying tampons. Mm. And then suddenly it was like someone flicked a switch, and I had a period every day for six months. No. It was like, I would have a period and then I would just keep bleeding. Oh, gosh. So I was like, oh, my goodness. So I came off that. And then I kind of just did my own thing for a bit. And then I went on the pill for my spots. um, One called Geradal, which cleared up my acne. I think I did that. You went on the pill. I went, not the, oh, no, I went on a pill for for spots. Oh, no, this is a contraceptive pill that helps. I was like, I don't think you did, bro. A contraceptive pill that helps your skin. Um, And basically, I'm over having hormones mm. the thing is with boys don't really realize this with the like with, with contraception for a girl you've just got a array of options and they've all got really shit side effects so you just have to think which side effects am i going to put up with the most yeah and you just have to do it that way mm-hmm. and it really acts it just stresses me out because it just shouldn't really be that way so that's why i went for the copper coil because i don't have to take a tablet every day yeah. it's there and yet yeah, there's no hormones in it. So it's like copper kills sperm. Oh. So it lives at the top of your uterus. Is it big? Well, you can get the five-year one and then the 10-year one. And the 10-year one is a couple of millimetres bigger than the five-year one. Okay. So she did show me the five-year one because when you sit down at your appointment, they do like a little diagram of what it looks like. Right. Where it's going to go. Speak you through the options. Yeah. And then... She was like, do you want five or ten years? And I was like, I don't really mind, obviously. It's like a phone contract. <laughs> it is, isn't it? I was five like, year plan? <laughs> I was like, well, I mean, in five years' time, I'll be 29. So I kind of hoped I'd be in a situation where I'd be having kids. Do you want kids at 29? I'd like one before I'm 30. Really? Mm, you should have them before you're 34. Because after 34, there's when you can have complications. Oh. There's a higher percentage of your child being disabled if it's after 34. I feel like I would want to have a child at 31. Really? Yeah. But then I just feel like there's so much pressure on women for all of that stuff. And men don't exactly. have this pressure. Absolutely. So it's not really, like, I'm not saying that's what people should do, but men just 
yeah, there's no pressure on men. Whereas for women, there's like this rush, it feels like. Absolutely. So then I kind of was like, do you know what? I don't like having a timestamp on things for that reason. Because then you just create expectations. Yeah. Then, what if at 29, I'm not even in a relationship? Then I'll be like, oh my God, I expected to have a child by now. Oh. Always pressures, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, do you know what? I'm going to go for 10 year. Basically, the difference is, because the 10 years one is slightly bigger, if it can fit or not. Mm. So like my friend, she had to get the five year because the 10 year one wouldn't fit. Um, oh, well, good for her. What are you trying to say about my? No, no, you wouldn't fit the 10 year either, no? No, I did. That's what oh. I got. Oh. Cheeky shit. <laughs> I didn't mean like that. <laughs> so, so it doesn't go, it, it can obviously fit up your vagina, but when it's the entry into your uterus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. a little bit. Um, so, <laughs> lol. Um, <laughs> look, I don't mind. Obviously, the 10 year one, because then I don't have to get it refit in five mm. years' time, and who knows where my life will take exactly. me. Exactly. So, I go in. I booked it ages ago. I had to wait like three weeks. She said there was a backlog because they couldn't fit them during coronavirus. Yeah. And a lot of women are now wanting them fitted. And you were nervous beforehand because even like a few weeks ago we were speaking yeah. about it. it. It was something that was playing on your mind. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to bite the bullet and get booked in. Yeah. Because look, right, I just don't have to think about it. It's there. Yeah. And like, you shouldn't really take the morning pill, morning after pill that often. Can you take the coil out? Yeah. So you, okay. you can take it out whenever okay. and your fertility goes back to normal. Perfect. Whereas if you're on the pill, sometimes it can take like a year for your fertility Just to go back. Just to go back, back to the same yeah. level. So I booked my appointment. I did Dean Street in Soho. Yeah, which I'm, I can't recommend enough. I can't re- recommend enough either. Yeah, so Dean Street in Soho is it's kind of at the forefront of London Sexual Health Clinics. Yeah. So on it, so professional. So friendly. Um, you know when you go to the doctors and you have really rude receptionists? Mm, they're so friendly at Dean I, Street. Because with this chat, we're almost like breaking down the stigma of like an STI check. Because yeah. I still have friends who are so scared to go and get one. Being in a comfortable environment like that makes you feel <gasps> 100%. calm and okay and ready to go in for a situation like this. It's a nice space as well. Like, what mm. floor do you go on? I went on to the second floor. So you, so they have a couple. So I yeah. go to 56 Dean Street Express for so my... So I've been to that one before, so to that, for an STI test. So that one is like your own STI check. So you go into like pods with a little tube. So you like checking on the iPad yeah. and you get given your tube. You get your tube, then you go in... And then, and then you have the little pods. So you've got your swabs. Yeah. So for me, I have to do my swab down my throat, which is fine. Yeah. Not the best. And then I've got to find some kind of position, <laughs> almost like a yoga downward dog, but <laughs> not where I can get a swab up my behind <laughs> in a nice way. Then pull that out and pop it into the little tube. And then you've got a wee and you've got to hold that wee for, t- for an hour beforehand, oh. which can be stressful. Yeah. And then you pop it all in the tube and then you put the tube in a little suction machine. And it, it goes, <laughs> like a booster scoop up the uh, yeah, yeah. thing into Willy Wonka. Yeah, yeah. and then you just... <laughs> That's what it's like. Such a good thing. And it just swoops it away and then you get a text eight hours later to tell you, well, between that to be told whether you've got anything or not. Honestly, it's so good. Mm-hmm. It's it's great. So I went in mm. and I took some paracetamol codeine beforehand because the everyone I'd like spoken to was like take painkillers beforehand and then they have like a they had a tv in my room and Mm. she was like do you want the film on and I was like yeah so they played Bridget Jones whilst (laughs) I was having this done so it was the scene where she's skiing and she has to go and get the pregnancy test I was like what a great scene to be watching right now but yeah it was it was uncomfortable so like when a woman, you know how I talked about how when a woman gets a smear test? Yes. So there's that part of it mm-hmm. when they clamp open your situation. Oof. And then the only oh, way I can describe it. Do you do that again? They clamp? Yeah, because obviously they need to keep you like that. The idea open. of a clamp for like, no. It, gives, it reminds me of, you know, woodwork oh, in school. Yeah. You've got the clamp and you wheel it open and then you put something in it and you're like oh. clamping it down. That's what the word clamp means to me. So when I'm thinking of someone clamping a foof, I'm like, oh, that is pretty livid. It's, <laughs> it's not a nice experience. It's, it's, look, it's fine. Is I it mean, like that? Now it's walking the park for me because I had so many on Thursday. Okay. The only way I can describe it is if you were doing archery and you got your bow and arrow they pull and it stays in place. They put like this kind of tube up you mm-hmm. past your cervix into your uterus and that measures how big your uterus is. Okay. So they know like how long to do the coil mm. and then they have to go again where they put the coil and oh my god it just it, I actually was like ow the whole time she was like are you okay? Are you mm. okay? There was another nurse there who was stood next to me and she was like Deep. she was like breathe in like breathe out she was like imagine you're at your pilates class doing your breathing <laughs> oh and i'm not gonna lie it it was like that pain that i was in i would say was like max three seconds yeah and then it's over but 
you feel very faint afterwards. She was like, no rush to get up. I was like, yep, I'm in absolutely no hurry to get up. I feel like I'm about to pass out. I'm like seeing stars at this point. Pop the sequel on. We're yeah, staying. I was just like, I'm just... I'm just going to lie here for a bit. And I came in and Meg was like, you are as white as a ghost. Like, oh dear. Are you okay? And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm fine, I'm fine. And then I sat down and then I think I just went off to bed and was like, I actually just cannot. Mm-hmm. So that was like to be expected. And I got into bed and I was like, oh my God, I am not okay. Yeah. And I was like, don't cry. Like, don't cry. And then I was just like, I can't, like, this is not, I was like trying to move into different positions. The pain would not go. Yeah. And like, I had Meg rubbing my back. Oh, bless Alex them. my head. And I was just like, oh, yeah. crying. I was like, guys, I think I should go to hospital. I, I've never, ever, ever, ever experienced anything like that, ever. Mm-hmm. Basically, I went to A&E. It's St. George's, which is my local, which is where they filmed 24 hours in A&E. Oh, I forgot about this element yeah. of the story. <laughs> There's, like, cameras everywhere. Those little white bulb ones. Yeah. Like, I can imagine they have on Big Brother. Mm. So they film certain areas of the hospital. Yeah, so there's one in recess, mm. one in urgent care, which is waiting room three. Okay. And then I'm not too sure where the other two are. But it was so interesting to see that. Mm. Gynecologist then got pulled in to do two emergency emergency surgeries from childbirth. Oh god, that's so sad. Obviously takes priority, and they were like, "He knows exactly what's wrong. It's something to do with the strings on the coil. You're more than welcome to wait, but it'll be hours. You may as well go home, go to sleep, and then mm. come back in the morning, or go back to your GP and just explain. They'll know exactly what to do." So I was like, "Fine." And how was the pain at this point? Did you feel like you were able to go back and yeah, sleep? Yeah, like okay. was, they gave me some painkillers, but not that which were fantastic. Knocked me out. Was it codeine? Code gives you a buzz. Code them all again. So then basically, then the next day, so I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to call Dean Street. Yeah. She was like, we've got no appointments. I thought she was going to say for like this week. She was like, today. And I was like, oh, I didn't want today. I actually wanted tomorrow anyway. So go to Dean Street. Yeah. Different nurse this time, different room. Didn't have the TV, sadly. Oh. So no Bridget Jones. Sad. But she. You went to be loose them. You went to be loose them. <laughs> she examined. And she was like, well, everything seems to be in place. Like, your strings are fine, they're equal lengths, da da da. She was like, but I'm concerned about your pain. It's only on one side. So mm. I'm going to get the doctor. Doctor came in, had a feel of tummy. She was like, do you mind if we do a pregnancy test? And I was like, oh, fucking hell. Imagine if I actually come oh, back. Oh, my God, imagine. <gasps> you don't need that on a Thursday no. at 9 a.m. And she was like, I'm just going to go speak to the senior doctor. And I was like, fantastic. Mm-hmm. This is why I like Dean Street. They had every resource under yeah. one roof. And then she was like, well, so we think you should go back to A&E. I'm going to write you a letter. I like, it won't make you skip the queue. But at least it means you don't have to start like, explaining from scratch. Yeah, this professional level oh, of service. I love that for her. I feel like my local GP would never. Oh, no. My local GP knows me on name and she just regrets every time I come in. She's like, oh, here we are again. Oh. Problem Rob. Last year I was there once every week. Oh, <laughs> I was like, hi, Angela. How are you? <laughs> Sit down. Oh. She's like, is it hand, foot and mouth? Mm, I think it is, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Rob. Problem Rob. <laughs> Problem <laughs> Rob. <laughs> Live for that. So I was like, I'm going to go there. And they sent me to urgent care. And then I got like a bed, a little cubicle for bed. And I just curled up on the bed. And I was like, ow. <laughs> so yeah, then got seen by a doctor. And, you know, same thing. Fed straight to gyno. I think there was a lot of waiting around. But basically it had another examination. Mm. Another clamp in there. Being fingered by a nurse is absolutely <laughs> not like being fingered by a guy. It's, mm, it's I get really that. not. When the plastic gloves go on and then she dribbles the gel on. It's like, ooh, lubing up. Lovely. Great. All being there. I probably got a pH imbalance from the amount of gels and fluids that I had to enter my vagina that day. Honestly, I do not want anything near my vagina for at least... 7 to 14 working days. Yeah, because I'm traumatised at the amount of things that have entered it in that one day. It God. was just... Oh, I just felt... Just in, out, in, exposed. out. And then I had an ultrasound scan. She was like, mm, there's nothing there. Ah. And then she was like showing me, here's your right, your left ovary, or you got your eggs in there. And I was like, ew! Because at this point I was so put off by pregnancy, by anything to do with children, I got grossed out by seeing well, can you see eggs. The, can you see the eggs? I could see the eggs. Oh my, it freaks me out. Eggs, eggs is so, yeah. Well, I was thinking, I was like, oh my gosh, like, so people have that as like a bit of caveat, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, ew. ooh. In summary, my body just it just didn't take my cervix didn't enjoy mm. the coil and she said to me i can she can take it out for me i was like i have not gone through all of this pain just to get to take it imagine out. so it's like a wasted journey who are like why why would you do that look i would deal with this week of pain it might even be two weeks whatever just to have 10 years of contraception and it's not hormonal it's exactly. better in the long run yeah i agree with that does it affect your period 
it can make it a bit heavier and a bit more painful, but I feel like it'll like your body will kind of adjust to it. Yeah. See, this is the thing. Men, we have it so, so easy. So easy. And it winds me up so much that male contraceptive was made, but they won't do it because men have side effects like mood swings. Really? Yeah. Because for me, obviously men use condoms in sex. And then as a gay male in London, I am on PrEP. So PrEP is pre-exposure prophylaxis. And it basically is a way for people who do not have HIV but are at high risk of getting HIV to prevent the HIV infection of taking hold of your body. So it's actually this week just been announced that the NHS are going to fund it. Yes! This week it was announced. I think I've been on the trial now for about two years and I use it as like the backup plan. So for what a woman would obviously have as birth control, Mm. people obviously still use a condom, but... Well, you you, you aim to use a condom, but that, (laughs) but this is the sort of backup plan. But apart from that, male sexual health is is so easy. I do feel. I remember the first time I went for an STI check, and bless the poor student nurse who helped do it with the older lady, and they actually had to put the swab down (gasps) the pee. Oh no! And Ow. ever since then, I've I've never gone back to doing that. I just do it myself with urine and all that other things because oh I don't God. want that that you came to visit. Crazy. Um, and I, I've just found the article. So please, the male pin pill has been designed to stop sperm production, and side effects meanwhile were few and mild. Five men on the pill reportedly had had dis- decreased sex drive. Two described mild erectile dysfunction, <laughs> but sexual activity was not decreased. And no participant stopped taking it because of the side effects and it passed all safety tests. That's fine. Great. Love that for the men. So men... But it's still not available. It's not a thing just because of those side effects, despite what women have. (laughs) I'm not it's joking. laughable, isn't it, really? I've still got my old pill upstairs. And the, you know when you buy even buy paracetamol and you get mm. the safety sheet inside? This is like A3. To be fair, for the prep one, that is that has a lot of side effects. But I think that's because it was on a trial. It was almost like the A to Z of any side effect you could have. And yeah. there was it's just one to, to, to do. And I think I remember when I first got on it, I got headaches and felt very, very fatigued for a good few weeks. Yeah. But I've been on it for so long now. You kind of get used to it. And then when yeah. I don't take it for a while and then take it again, depending on sexual activity. Because you can take it two ways. Yeah. You either take it every single day and it acts just like a preventron. Yeah. Or some people take it event-based, oh. which means that if you know you're going to have sex or you're planning to have sex, you take two that day and then you take one every day for the following three days and it just prevents you in that instance of having... Oh. Which is an interesting way to do it because it's almost like preparing for the fact you're going to have unprotected sex yeah but that's the same as like i know people who pop an emodium before they go on a night out just because if they're gonna bomb they don't want a situation oh my god <laughs> ew <laughs> makes sense though no? yeah but ew. <laughs> ew i forgot people do that oh, oh the days god. of clubbing i've only ever had the morning after pill once mm-hmm and it's bloody expensive. It's like 30 quid. You shouldn't have to pay for that. Yeah. I think you can go to a clinic and you can get it for free. I just went to the pharmacist mm. um, around the corner and just paid for it. But it kind of does fuck up your periods and you don't feel like fantastic afterwards. Like it's not lovely. And it's really bad if you take it more than once. Really? Does it have like a continuous effect? It just empties like everything out. So like mm. you bleed, you, it can make like your period come like quicker. I mean, mine kind of come like instantly and it's just not really kind of almost just it just force everything out yeah it's not great do you know what i'm gonna ask you because obviously we're talking about like sexual health and all that other stuff mm. when did you get your first ever sti check because when i was at college mm-hmm. and you'd always get the the sexual health people would come down and they'd set up a table and they'd be like do an sti test oh and what? yeah they would try and bribe you <laughs> they did they did yeah what? free cinema tickets I remember I got some... I can't remember what it was. I wish I got free cinema tickets now. But they would, like, so bribe you to do it. a <laughs> go every week. But I do think that's a good idea, because then at a young age, it gets you into the habit of doing them. Not habit, but it introduces you to them. Because how are you... Because I know, for me, I'm recommended to go... Every, I have to go every three months. Well, I do one every time I sleep with someone new. Maybe there is sometimes a couple of months delay after that. Mm. Have you, So when you do your STI tests... Mm-hmm. Do you do them at home? Oh, no. I know. Of course, you do Dean Street Express. So, 
Yeah, so you get the t- so you do them in that little pod, mm. pop all the bits and bobs, and then obviously you go away and hope for the best. Yeah. So you do at home. So us girls in the house, we all did one a couple of weeks ago. Okay. I, do, I just took ages to do mine. Did it the other day. I got my results back. I'm fine. And what's the extra time you get the text back? Well, mine I feel like took a week. Like I posted it on Monday, mm. and then I got the results back Friday. Oh, Five days. That's not bad that's at all. Fine. Taking twenty four to forty eight hours for delivery. Yeah, Gosh. that's all right. But yeah, that I think is the easiest way to do that. You can do the HIV one as well. They give you a kit to do a blood yeah. sample. But I just did cheeky swab for chlamydia and gonorrhea. Yeah. Um. But have you ever had a positive? Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Okay. Oh my god. What, what, right, what did you so, have? So I'll explain the story. So I can't believe I just admit that on the podcast. But I feel like right. Sure, well, no. When I found out I was positive mm-hmm. for I had chlamydia, I was mortified. I mean, it's the common cold. I was <laughs> literally, and then I didn't realise how many people actually have had chlamydia. Right. Exactly. So. Yeah. Wait, wait, tell me your story first. How old was you? When was it? Well, it was when I just did a routine test when mm-hmm. I was going to get the pill done, the doctors. And you know, like, you get the text if you're fine. And I got a missed call. Be like, can you call us? And I was like, you are joking. You know me. it straight away. You know you that. You are mm. joking me. And, yeah, she was like, oh, you've tested positive for chlamydia. Can you come to the doctors? And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. my. I was so embarrassed. Because at this point, I think I'd only slept with, like, four people. So it was one of the four. But not, no, like, not at that time. Oh, uh, did you know who it was? Yeah, it could, yeah. Two options. It, no, it was one option because the three of them had done a test yeah. then, so it was, uh. like, the latest one. And did you confront them? Yeah, well, obviously, I was still sleeping at the time, so I had to tell oh. them. So awkward. And what did they say? How did they respond? They were like, ew, that's, they, it was my <laughs> psychotic ex-boyfriend, so oh. he did not respond to that very, very well. <laughs> obviously, it was in the early stages yeah. of the relationship, so I was a bit like, um, mm. who the fuck else have you been sleeping with? Not, True. not a time I would like to revisit, to be honest. No, nope, let's not think about that. But I was just so mortified. I remember, like, the nurse was giving me such a pep talk, and I was just sat there, and I was like, I can't believe I've got a I can't, I feel like such <laughs> you, slag. You feel, I just feel yeah. disgusting. Oh, my God. The medication knocked me sick. I took it before I went to uni. I'm not joking. I sat in that lecture. I was like, I'm out of it. Oh I'm gone. God. So I've had one thing, but I remember once there was a chance someone texted me saying, I have gonorrhea you need to go and get checked for it and when I went to get checked they went oh we'll just give you the injections um now and then take the medication and then you'll get a call in two days time and you just stop taking it it won't do any harm if Mm. not and I was like oh okay so I got my arm out oh no the injections are in your bum what and there's Rob at the age of 18, 19, whips his pants down, and then student nurse comes in, you know, the one from the swab before. Oh, oh are, are you okay if she does it? Oh, yeah, of course. Can't have a go, her, and you try your best. So they're like, Ooh. right, so you're going to find a bit of flesh? Am I going to, um, bit, uh, just a bit of fat there? And I'm like, yeah, hun, got a thick butt, we're aware. And then they stick the thing in. I wasn't even positive for it. Oh, I my was God, negative. you went through all of that and you weren't even but, positive. But, you know, I helped her get her degree. What oh, are you going to say? I love that But the only you. time it was positive was also for chlamydia. And it was on a routine check. And my manager at work was traveling to Germany. And she said that she needed to get her sister some jeans from Primark. So I was like, I'll go with you. Okay, it's fine. So I stood in Primark, the massive queue. Mm-hmm. I'm like 5.30 p.m. And all of a sudden, I'm on my phone. And it goes, beep. And I looked down and it's, and because you get in a list, it was, um, so it says gonorrhea, urine, negative, throat, negative, bum, negative, chlamydia, um, urine, negative, uh, bum, negative, throat, you need treatment. You had it in, <laughs> in your throat. throat. So I was walking around with clap throat. So I'm like oh my God. stressed out. I'm standing in the middle of Primark, not even in the home furniture department, in the fucking jean department. Oh my God. I'm like, babe, I need to go. I've got an hour before this place closes. I run there and I'm like, I'm, I just got this text. <laughs> and obviously you're just mortified. So like, yeah, yeah, go downstairs. I'm like, oh. Oh my god, chlamydia in the throat? Yeah, in the throat. So you can get chlamydia from a blowjob? Yeah. Ah! Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We'll move on to the blowjob situation after this. Yeah, I never have um, questions. So I sit down there, get inside, they're like, oh, okay, bring you in. And they're trying to be nice. But at this point, I did not know what to do. And so I just used my GCC acting situations and cried. I was like, stop. I've been been seeing this guy. (laughs) 
I don't know how I got it. And literally put on this complete false narrative. Oh and they're like, it's okay. And they're like, passing me the tissues. Seven days of pills. And it, I was going to you see the... seven days? I was going to see the Spice Girls. I couldn't drink at the Spice Girls because I was on fucking chlamydia medication. Oh my God. What kind of gay nightmare was that? Horrendous. Um, I only had one pill. Oh! I just took one for mine. In, maybe, maybe that's why it knocked may, me back. Maybe, um... It really lives in the throat. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm slightly traumatised by that. I mean, it's like Nami Coke Zero and it's going through that. What a I've disaster. I've never had an STI test where they've done the throat. Oh yeah, we do swab, swab. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. We, and it checks everything. Yeah. <laughs> this actually just shows how important it is though to get routine checkups. Yeah. Because both of us wouldn't have known if I had we no just symptoms. didn't do routine. Yeah, I had no symptoms at all. Not even a sore throat, no symptoms. Not even a sore throat. Oh, no. Oh my goodness. So it's, I think that is like super important. It's so important just to be aware. Yeah. It's, and just, you you might not feel like you have anything. You might not know what you have, but you just go and get checked because it's better to know. Do you wear condoms when you have sex? I try to. I've, I've never, <laughs> ever, ever slept with a guy and he has offered to wear a condom. He's never offered to? Never. See, I think that's really bad. So when I slept with this guy recently and I was like, oh, do you mind if you wear a condom? And he was like, yeah, fine. And I actually, felt quite, it's... I actually felt quite empowered to asking. But did you it's feel did you asked. feel nervous to ask that? Yeah, I was a bit See, like, that's where well, it's no, wrong. I was like a little bit. And then when we were in the in the mood, or whatever, and mm. I was like, I actually don't care because like if you're not going to do it, then you can just get fucked. Yeah, you see, not the... literally like fuck, you can get out. <laughs> you won't be getting fucked. <laughs> you won't be getting oh. fucked. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't going nowhere. But um, my this uh, this STI check I had this week, I was asked if I had done oral sex unprotected. See, I saw you do this tweet. And, and I had really to confused. tweet about it. I was so confused. So is it like giving a blowjob so when she, you find a condom? Because I had a quite an adverse reaction of, sorry? Sorry, Jeanette? What? And she was like, yeah, um, t- t- you had unprotected oral sex. I was like, obviously. Yeah. It's just supposedly, you're supposed to have oral sex with the person wearing a condom. I'm sorry. No. I don't understand how so, that would so work. The, so how would that... My big fear is I'd be going for gold. You know, I commit when I could do a job. Yeah. And it would hit the back of my throat and I would choke to death on yeah. a condom. No, I'm not doing well, that. Well, if you accidentally breathe in and you just breathe the condom into the back of your throat. But also, is that fun for anyone? No. I'd actively like to ask anyone who has done this. I'm not... We won't reveal names. No, but, but if I someone could know. just tell me whether they have given oral sex with someone wearing a condom or... What would the female version be? That's what I'm trying Netting? to think. Oh my goodness. They can't be. Cellophane? <laughs> Let's Google it. I'm Googling it. Sorry for everyone listening. Alex is in the background. So Alex said the female equivalent is called a dental dam. Oh my God. Oh, that sounds like horrifying. A latex sheet. Ooh. <laughs> used between the mouth and vagina or anus during oral sex. An anus. So I need someone to wear a condom and I need to get a dental dam for their bum. <laughs> That's just a lot of material, to Where be honest. Where can you buy them? Like, I've save never seen I them. Yeah, save the planet. I can't use a plastic straw anymore, thanks to Theresa May, but I have oh, to do this. you can Dolphins. make one. So you get a condom, cu- cut the top off and cut the bottom off. Well, and then you ruffle it. Where's this art attack? Who has got time for art attack when you're getting... Da- you'd be absolutely... Oh, you'd be, dry you'd be as an aura by that point. <laughs> Crikey, no. What is the point? I'm sorry, but there's, there's no pleasure in that whatsoever. No, that's the thing about sex, and that's why, as much as we live in a very sexually liberated society, and I do think for men, it is like, I do think women get way more stick for being sexually liberated than men do, which oh, is yeah. the classic 2020, it's still going on. Yeah. Um, but there is such an importance about just being aware of your body and trusting the person you sleep with. Yeah. Because also, the people who look the best might be filled with the worst you never know yeah you never know honestly you'd never look at me and thought i had the clap would you yeah you didn't think i was hopping around <laughs> in my throat you know <laughs> cranky no but uh it's also just breaking the stigma of you know an sti shouldn't feel like this inc- it's not no. the best but there's always medication and support no matter what it is and you don't get sad when you have a cold and flu Exactly. And honestly, like you, you joke saying chlamydia is the common cold, but it is very common. Mm. And in the world we live in, and we're so lucky to be right now that there is so much medication and assistance for anything and yeah. everything. Because I suppose, I think it's like 60 or 70% of the world have uh, herp. Oh, really? Herpes or something. But that, that cold sores. Yeah. So according to the World Health Organization, 3.7 billion people under the age of 50 have herpes. Ooh. 67% of the global population interesting and that's just the kind of example now 
they, there's these things and they, that are out there with everyone mm. and you, you don't know. So as long as you're aware of what you have, then you can have an open and honest sexual relationship with someone. Yeah. And there shouldn't be judgment. Because yep. I know that even where, with, for example, HIV, where that is now, the fact that you can get a pill that will be, make you unable to transmit it. And it's also breaking the stigma of what HIV is because mm. people hear HIV and alarm bells go off. Yeah. But medication and where that is and people knowing their how to because there's this thing called undetectable yeah so if you have hiv you take tablets and medication that means you're unable to transmit a positive load oh wow yeah and that makes you undetectable but there's this stigma about it and people don't aren't educated enough to understand it and therefore it just adds to the fear and whatever that is so we have come so far in medication and in the world and the way we live but it's just being open to like understanding it and learning about it and knowledge yeah it's so true and like even if you have symptoms of something I used to get so scared to go to the doctors or mm. nurses for anything to do with down there yeah and you know what I I mean I unfortunately had to experience it by going into the deep end yeah but I they just look at genitals every, like that's their job yeah they, they have seen all sorts like I'm, I'm just not even worried about that anymore they've seen far too many angry fannies and infuriated penises to worry about yours absolutely like <laughs> they do not go home at night and be like oh my god this girl bb like i saw her her for jj yeah. like no like honestly that's their job true they chose to do that job and yeah, it's just normal for them yeah but our body should be normal yeah you should it's for it's the same as you know we're in breast cancer awareness month oh yeah we are it's october and it's just that thing of you should be checking your body i always check my boobs in the shower the fear of not knowing shouldn't be more than the fear of going no doesn't make sense does it i don't know yeah the fear of not knowing should may the fear of not knowing shouldn't be more than the fear of going oh, okay yeah. does that make sense or am i, I saying think, it wrong i feel like it does the fear I mean, I of like not knowing you so you're basically saying you shouldn't be scared to go you shouldn't you should be more scared to not know what you have yes. than scared to go and find out yeah yeah so the fear of not knowing shouldn't be more than going we got there in the end oh it rhymes he loves love that <laughs> i love getting honest and open about topics that people feel a bit funny about i think you've just got to don't we and i think with your week that you've had yeah. we couldn't get on this podcast and not talk about it yeah and i do think though like everything that's happened to me if i ever see anyone complain about getting a smear test i'd love to give you my week <laughs> smear test an absolute walk in the park i now i really can't understand why anyone is scared about getting a smear test i really can't but also when you put that on your instagram story you got loads of feedback from people oh my god it was the most interactive thing i've ever 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 post i only actually got back to replying to everyone yesterday can we please end this section on the message that you got from a male <gasps> <laughs> This oh, was the cloud. This just says it all. This really is just so brilliant. Oh my god, I've kept this in my requests because I can't bring to myself to delete it. <laughs> so I put this on my Instagram story. I was yep. like, oh, obviously, I'm going to get the coil. I'm a bit nervous because all I've heard is horror stories. Yeah. Can someone please, like, can you, if you've got any positive stories, send me them to make me feel better? Yeah. And I, was, I had so many. And so I have to say, no horror stories I get. My girlfriend was on the coil. She started showing signs that she was pregnant, and she was, so she had to have an abortion. And as well, she had further scans as the coil went missing. Still don't know where the fuck it's gone. They said it must have came out. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like she was probably trying to baby trap you. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess didn't have the reaction she wanted when she mm -hmm. was pregnant. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Disaster. Because, like, there is a very, 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 very small chance it can come out. But trust me, you would know it was, you would know. Yeah. You can't just go for a wee one day and then not notice that it's, that you can't just wee it out. You can't poo it out. You can't pee it out. There's no way in hell you would you not know. You can't just shoot it out. And yeah, you're supposed no. to check because it comes, there's like strings that dangle down that you check the strings to make sure it's still there. There is no the way. The strings are, what, like Pinocchio? No, so you have like a coil. Puppet. That's right at the top. Yeah. Down through the cervix. Uh -huh. And then about a centimetre to two centimetres into the cervix, there's strings. And can you feel them? Yeah, so you're supposed to feel the strings just so you know it's there. Gosh, you that's a lot. A little finger session every month or so just to check it's there. And you sort yourself out, my love. Yeah. Treat yourself on a yeah. nice Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I don't want any sex for at least like two weeks because it's bad. Uh, well, yeah. luckily we're going into a second lockdown. I shouldn't be having sex anyway, should I? We're following the rules. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we hop into Galcode rules? Yes. Let's go. Loving what you hear? 
I mean, obviously, head straight over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a little rating and review. I mean, if you're extra special, we'll put your review on a tile on our Instagram grid at the Gal Code Podcast. Thanks! So we are back with our Gal Code rules for the week. Whoop, whoop. I am bringing back a little bit of a bitchy one. Oh, I'm so here for bitchy it's one. It's a little bit sassy. Yeah. My one is... Skip the status and buy a fucking journal. I am Ooh. sick to death of hopping on Facebook. If you put more than one status a week on Facebook, you've got problems. You've got a problem. Yeah. Let alone nine a day. What? Who people, do you have? Oh my god! I have people who will update me. They'll check in at work. What? They'll pop their little help status off. Then they put one up in the afternoon. Then they pop one up in the evening. Then they pop a little photo up as well. I'm sorry, hun. If you go to Poundland, WH Smith, 2020 has been a shit year for all. You can get a diary for one pound. Those 2020 diaries are in the bargain bucket bins. Grab one of them, write your feelings down, and pop a status up when people actually care about it. Because I don't care what you have for dinner. Don't care what you're doing for lunch. I certainly don't care what you're doing for your breakfast. Can I add into this? Make, it might make it a little bit more bitchy. A little slightly <laughs> hypocritical. So obviously I'm partial to an Instagram story. Yeah. But can we stop this on Instagram stories as well? Like I could literally, there's some people and I'm like, oh God, I, do you know, I, if I saw you in the street, I wouldn't even need to know how you're doing because I see everything from your Instagram story. There's no need to do your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, your walks, your TV show. People over, over share. Yeah. Like it's ridiculous. I mean, I do normally post when I'm in the gym, but that's because mostly I'm not really doing much of my life at the moment. I like people to know I'm alive. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. having a cute little day out, you know, that's a rarity nice. these days. Yeah. But it's just too much. Yeah, pack it in a bit. Pack it in. Are we still even doing Facebook statuses as Maybe well? Maybe they Come should on. just be banned. Yeah. A Facebook status? What are we in, 2007? <laughs> May as well open Pixo accounts and make our own websites. Oh, um, love that. Love that. <laughs> uh, what is yours for the week? Um, mine is fitting with the theme. Love that. Mine is check yourself and don't wreck yourself. Okay. You know, get your routine checkups. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like from this, I feel like everyone should probably book an STI test. Yeah. What is actually stopping you? Come on. It's 2020. We need to stop being careful about these things. We need to look after our bodies. You would look after your skincare routine, so look after your sexual health. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think there's any choice here. That is our rule for the week. Love that. Check back in again. Check yourself. Don't wreck yourself. Because, actually, when we're talking about chlamydia, if that goes untreated, it can make you infertile. Oh, That's nobody wants that. That's what scares me about chlamydia. You never know. I might sell my sperm and make some children. Oh, you would have the most beautiful children. That is such a nice thing, but what a lie. No, <laughs> Do you imagine? how cute your eyes. How their eyes would be so blue. Oh, little baby blues. Oh, oh. love that. I always wanted a little Rob, and I would dress him up exactly like me. I would wear matching outfits in, like, big sunglasses. <gasps> and then um, he'd be a sassy little bitch. And then I would put them on the stage on Britain's Got Talent. Of course you would. And then, like, a little Arabella. I kind of do like the name Arabella. Like, or just some sort of long and tall name so I can stand on the side of the stage like, Arabella, Arabella, <laughs> dance, dance. <laughs> <laughs> Only you would do that. We love a stage school brat. Love that. Um, love that for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. BBC. So like, why he probably we got doesn't really like Do you know what about David Attenborough, which I didn't know? And I didn't know it was real. What? So Jeez. I genuinely thought it was fake. Like, what? and I used to think, why do 12 million people sit and watch some sort of like CGI'd animal situation every week? I never thought it was real. You joke. And someone told me last week, he's like, no, it's actually real. I was like, but how do they find the animals? Incredible. So if you watch the program, at the end, they have 10 minutes yeah, to show I found you how they film. <laughs> it was still this as well, but I've never watched it. I, gen like, oh, I, I, I genuinely <laughs> used to think, because it used to be the highest watched show every week. I was like, why does everyone want to watch this man narrate CGI? Like, I find it bizarre. Oh my God. But it's real. And then the one they did underwater, they actually went in these pods to the bottom of the ocean. But do you believe it's real? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I have no well, idea. So how do you feel after getting all of that off your chest, BB? What, announcing to the world that I once had chlamydia? Absolutely overjoyed. No, I feel like it's good Sharing is caring. I will say, I don't want anyone to be put off by my coil story. Yeah. I think it's really important to note that you can never compare your experience with someone else's because everyone is so different. Mm -hmm. Like my friend, she got it put in, she went back to work and just could, could, had sex two days later. Exactly. I got it put in, couldn't even work and won't be having sex for at least two weeks. Like, you just don't know how your body's going to react to it. But you've just got to... It's like how I said at the start, contraception contraception for women is like opening up a book and be like, ooh, what side effect do I want to have? Yeah. And I think in the long run, a week of pain for 10 years 
of no hormones, no like like mm-hmm. no having to worry about getting pregnant, I would take that any day. Exactly. So I think when you weigh it up that way, I'm like, absolutely. And I know that the pain that I've had, I'll never have again f- until obviously I have babies. So yeah, I feel, I feel good. And let's just break the stigma. I think that's the absolutely. whole thing about this entire episode. Have an open conversation about your sexual health. Be open within yourself. Talk to people about it. Don't be afraid to communicate about it. And then you're you're all good yeah so next week we are going to do an episode called the perfect date and we are going to talk about everything that you have to get ready for to go on a first date so we're talking organization where we should go preparation what should you wear yeah what should you talk about what are your red flags what are your green flags and everything in between Mm -hmm. so we want to hear from you oh my god i sound like the little pre-recording that we do do. (laughs) Love that. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. So if you've <laughs> sent us your first date horror stories, great moments, your green flags, your red flags. Like, have you ever been on a first date and you'd be like, oh my God, that's the best date I've ever been on. Have you ever been on a date and be like, absolutely never doing that ever again. We want to hear these stories. We want to hear stories. it all. And we're going to break them down in what, and also where do you think you should go on a date? What? Lockdown dates. Oh. Everything. I'm not here for the Zoom dates. No. But, no, but are you here for the Zoom dates? Yes. Did you have a Zoom date? I want to know. How did it go? Yeah. We want the deets. Send them into our DMs. And we will see you next week for that episode. Love that for you. Bye. Bye.